Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, pastor who allegedly raped a young church member remanded. Arbitration court orders traffic controllers to return to work. An old railway bridge considered a death trap. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Saga. Pastor from Nosori has today fronted the court charged with heinous sexual offences against a 15-year-old girl. He is alleged to have raped, sexually and indecently assaulted a young member of his church last Thursday. There was also drama outside the courthouse as the accused was brought by police this morning. Aksita Tale was in court and filed this report. 36-year-old Ravinesh Chand, a pastor of a Hindi Christian fellowship in Osori, is alleged to have committed sexual offenses on a 15-year-old girl in Luvuluvu. In court today, it was revealed that the victim is a member of his congregation. The alleged rapist has been charged with three counts of rape, one count of sexual assault, and one count of indecent assault. An overzealous follower of his church was also in court and tried to stop FBC News on several occasions from filming his court appearance. This woman also touched our camera, trying to stop us from filming the accused. This did not stop here, as she also tried to stop other media from filming and, in the process, passing comments. In court, the prosecution requested to remand the accused in custody as he committed an indictable offense and the case is also of public interest because the accused is alleged to have raped his church member. His defense counsel requested bail saying the accused will stay in Tuatua in Lombasa to ensure he doesn't interfere with the victim. The court was also informed by the defense the pastor had a previous conviction in 2007 for impersonation. The defense told the court the accused will look for another job as he will no longer be the pastor of the church. The defense says this is an old matter. Chand has been remanded and will reappear tomorrow for bail hearing. Akusita Tali, FBC News. Meanwhile, FBC will be filing a police complaint against the woman. The fear that the old river bridge becoming a death trap has raised concerns for the Nosori Town Council. The council has confirmed that metal pieces are falling from the bridge and people using the Syria Park and the Rewa River are at risk. Ali Kimbia with the story. The Nosori Town Council revealed the anxiety over the old railway bridge after being questioned by the Public Accounts Committee to give an update on the bridge. Can you update the committee what sort of uh, <coughs> plans you have for that particular railway bridge, if you do have any? Please. Parts of it are fragmentally falling onto the ground and there is a high risk of people getting injured or at any time the bridge can collapse. Narayan says the onus is on the Fiji Road Authority to take immediate action and avoid any casualty. Since certain parts of the concrete were falling down in the river, so because we're looking at the risk avoiding any challenges arising, uh, FRA has, uh, we did write, the council did write its concern to FRA, showing that the state, the bridge was going and the challenges that were coming. In a statement released to FBC News, FRA CEO Jonathan Moore says they have closed off the bridge indefinitely and dismantling it will cost millions of dollars. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The shortage of veterinarians in the country and the Pacific has triggered the Fiji National University to invest in a veterinary teaching hospital, the first in the Pacific. While officiating at its groundbreaking ceremony in Koronivia, Agriculture Minister Dr. Mahenda Reddy says animal welfare is now becoming a critical issue and people need to pay attention to address it. Senia Nimboila reports. 
This new animal hospital and laboratory complex will be the first of its kind in the Pacific, providing the best services animals need. You will have referrals from across Fiji in our own ministry's parliaments who, have, who undertake a lot of primary care of animals. We will also require routine health care representation, 24 hour emergency service, intensive care, and own farm animal care provided to a number of services. FNU Vice-Chancellor Professor Nigel Healy says the new hospital will allow students to undertake clinic practices on campus. It will give the country's registered vets a place to come and work with our students to raise the standard for veterinary science in Fiji. It will be a facility that will signal to the region that Fiji is ready to lead the way in the development of the livestock industry and the raising of standards of animal welfare. The $30 million project will help in the upgrade and the regular upscaling of our para vets, which will be providing veterinary services to our farmers in the agriculture ministry. Sainian Mboila, FBC News. The Ministry of Defense and National Security is working with other ministries to address non-traditional issues that could pose threat to people's daily lives. The National Security and Defense Council Secretariat says the issues include food, energy and water safety, climate change, disaster relief and economic performance. Kelly Vidala with the details. Fiji's security strategy not only focuses on threats against the essential values of the state but also on issues of our well-being. Ours also include um, the non-traditional security issues like climate change, uh, energy security, water security, food security. Uh, for us in Fiji, even poverty is a security yeah. issue. Sharing common interest with the Indonesian government, its ambassador to Fiji, RM Benjamin Scott Karnadi, says climate change is a major threat for every nation. The rise of seawater is also a threat in Indonesia. Even the capital city of Indonesia, Jakarta, mm. is actually, according to scientists, is already below the sea levels. NSDCS Director General Timothy Natuva says it's also important for countries to collaborate and share information on security. We are working in consultation with other ministries on how we can monitor, how we can help, how we can the other ministries can help each other in regards to that. Maybe sometimes when we prepare what we are trying to do, then we'll have to come back and see you. The ministry is currently working with the Indonesian Embassy to strengthen its operational procedures regarding its National Integrated Communications Centre. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Still to come, PRB to try and move tenants earning above $25,000. And Nasila Sila pleads not guilty. Details after the break. The Public Rental Board, in its effort to accommodate those that are on their waiting list, will try to move tenants earning above $25,000 to home ownership. PRB Chief Executive Patrick Vio says it's important to allocate spaces to applicants who are lower income earners and the need for higher income tenants to move is paramount. Savara Tambo reports. More than 100 tenants are involved and consultation is ongoing for the tenants earning higher incomes to be accommodated at a housing authority subdivision. So, as you know, the cost of construction is quite high um, and uh, for us to refer them to housing authority. We have been talking to them and uh, we hope that they will accommodate uh, them in the new subdivisions. The board has already begun the income survey and has covered more than 85 percent of their tenants. PRB officer Siti Benitambo has confirmed talks are ongoing. Well when they move in uh, they did meet the criteria of 16,000 to 25,000 when, uh, when they residing at the estate some of them get promoted, but we've been talking to them one on one basis. I agree with that because uh, uh, like uh, when we came in first, we were told that this place was for the low income earners. It's better for, for them, those who are over 25, I strongly agree that they can, uh, PRB can 
and make them to find another house uh, outside. So those who are earning 25 above, they are in a better position to look for accommodation elsewhere. So I think it's a good move by PRB. The need for PRB to look at all avenues, including constructing more rental units, is important at this stage, considering the number of people in need of housing. Samuel Ratambua, FBC News. Former Fiji Sevens player Amenoni Nasila Sila today pleaded not guilty to a charge of rape. The 26-year-old allegedly sexually assaulted a 24-year-old woman in Olusara, Singatoka last December. The charge and particulars of the case were read to Nasila Sila in the Lotoka High Court. He indicated that he understood them. The prosecution also stated in court that instruction from the DPP to not withdraw the case. Bail has been extended for Nasila Sila and the case has been transferred to the Suva High Court to be called on April 10th. Police await technical advice from the Fiji military forces in relation to the suspected murder-suicide of an elderly couple in Lamy yesterday. Police had confirmed that the military was called in to inspect a firearm found at the crime scene in Nangumu Place. The victims were found lying motionless in their room by their son yesterday morning. Police confirmed there were visible injuries on both bodies and an early investigation indicated a case of murder-suicide. Police also say they will not make any further comments until the investigation is complete. Christchurch police have seized a number of firearms following a tip-off from the public. Officers are now investigating the man who sparked the major operation posed any threat to the community or had any connections to the mosque attacks. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, Fiji Sports Commission introduced Trainer Trainer Program to upskill community coaches and referees. But first, we have Rachel with business. Thanks, Amrita. Good evening and coming up after the break. FHL hopes to stay within budget for new tower. And in growing Fiji, Nasori Town Council embarks on a deal to develop old market area. Stay with us. I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Jenny Rawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Outrigger, Coraco, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Mariva. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, following certain delays, construction work on the 17-storey Fijian Holdings Tower has started along Gordon Street in Suva. The tower, which is expected to be completed in two years, will house 13,000 square feet of commercial office space. Punita Prakash reports. Fijian Holdings Limited Chief Executive Nozab Farid says they hope to stay within their budget of $65 million with the construction of the tower. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to finish that within. Uh, but again, it is almost more than close to two years. So anything can go wrong. Uh, cement prices can go up, steel prices can go up, and we are importing a lot of materials. The exchange rate can go up. So anything is possible. So we have allowed few contingencies, but hopefully we are not looking at any cost overruns. Farid says the building will be one of a kind and is something people can look forward to. It's a green building. It is uh, because Fiji held uh, COP23. So at that, that is the time we basically planned this. So therefore we are uh, making all the attempts to make it a green building, which means our energy is very efficient, uh, no any emissions at all. Uh, wastewater will be treated. We are planning to harvest the rainwater. So overall, it will become eco-friendly. 150 new jobs will be created upon the completion of the tower. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Sanifa from HSC Bank joins us now with the latest from the money world. Let's have a quick look at the foreign exchange market today. New Zealand Central Bank kept interest rates at a record low of 1.75%. The central bank said increased downside risk meant the next move in rates was now more likely to be a cut 
knocking the currency to a two-week low. While steady rates were expected, the shift in bias to explicitly favor a rate cut was a shock to the markets. The Reserve Bank of New Zealand said that they would keep the official cash rate at an expansionary level to contribute to increasing sustainable employment and maintaining low and stable inflation. The US dollar, however, held modest gains as a recovery in investor risk appetite arrested a decline in benchmark US Treasury yields, which fell to 15 month lows this week. That's all from HFC Bank for now. Binaka. Thanks, Anifa. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. The Fiji dollar showed strength on the foreign exchange markets today, gaining against the Chinese yuan, American dollar, and four others of the seven currencies we cover. It showed a tiny decline against the Aussie dollar. As for the commodities market, it was a mixed day. Crude oil prices were on the rise to over $60 per barrel. Gold was down at $1,316 per ounce. And silver fell as well to $15.43 per ounce. And in growing Fiji tonight, the Nasori Town Council is embarking on a public-private partnership deal to develop the oil market area. This has been confirmed to FBC News by Acting Chief Executive Deo Narayan while presenting their submission to the Public Accounts Committee. Narayan says they have completed all the paperwork and are awaiting for the final approval from the local government ministry. He confirmed the council has also acquired civic lease for the car park area adjacent to the old market. Narayan says they will continue to do whatever it takes to develop Nasori Town. The council is interested to have a private-public partnership arrangement to develop the site and Ministry of Local Government has been last week dispatched with relevant papers for decision to be made on the earlier PPP arrangement as agreed. And that's a wrap from the business desk for tonight. Jamie is up with the latest in sports. Thanks and good evening up ahead in sports. Nasoko ruled out of Hong Kong and Singapore Sevens. And players moving to Rugby League are concerned for Fijiana coach. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch Shepherd. Mitch Shepherd is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rock Team Lambasa. I'm Soname, Nasori Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Bubble Single Line, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jack's Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. Fiji Airways 7 skipper Kalione Nasoko has been ruled out of the Hong Kong and Singapore tournaments due to a persistent knee injury. Coach Gareth Baber says Nasoko has not been able to recover in time. Meanwhile, Baber will name his traveling squad for the next two tournaments later this evening. The 7s team departs for Hong Kong tomorrow where they are pooled with New Zealand, Australia and Kenya. The tournament starts next Friday. Fiji Airways Fijiana Sevens coach Sayasi Fuli says keeping players in the system has been a challenge. Fuli revealing today that the already small pool of female rugby players in the country has further depleted after a majority of players from last season are now committed to rugby league. Melitavanga reports. Fijiana Sevens coach Sayasi Fuli says he has a plan to keep players in the squad. Uh, the, the, the threat from uh, Fiji Rugby League. This majority of uh, the players that were involved last year with Fijiana 15s and um, the Skipper Cup, they are now being tied up or pulled across with Rugby League. And that is our, my focus right now, is try to secure these girls for the long term. Fully says the Fiji Rugby Union is helping him to keep players from leaving for league. Uh, we have the support from uh, the Fiji Rugby Union board and the CEO of uh, securing uh, contracts for the girls. And that is my, my, my goal right now, uh, short term, is to, to keep these girls together. They are very talented, they are very good, and uh, uh, once we uh, 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 
are going well with our objective that is to, to stay in the series and uh, qualify for the Olympics. And my next aim is to expand the squad. Meanwhile, 18 players are currently training in the squad, fighting for the final 13 sports in the Japan Sevens, which start on the 20th of next month. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. The development and upskilling of community coaches and referees was an area the Fiji Sports Commission had identified a few years ago as in need of major improvement. During the 2016 annual report submission to the Standing Committee on Social Affairs this afternoon, FSC Chair Peter Maisie says the introduction of its trainer-trainer program is helping solve the issue. Melita Vanga reports. Lack of community coaches and referees has been a concern for the Fiji Sports Commission for a while now. The train the trainer is we found that there was a big gap in our communities and in sports in the country in that we didn't have coaches, we didn't have referees. We had lots of athletes, but nobody to coach them. Maisie says the Train the Trainer program accredits about 30 people in each area. Under the Train the Trainer, we also run programs to take members of that have been trained as community coaches to be accredited as level two and level three coaches. Meanwhile, opposition MP Mikhail Lewere raised the question if the commission has plans in setting the same program in schools. I am just wondering if we have something in plan in order to have that more emphasis where schools participate. We're hoping that we can do that through our educate the educator programs the commission is aiming to expand the trainer trainer program around the country. Meli Tavanga, FBC Sports. It's back to business for the Wellington Phoenix footballers after a week off as they look to cement their spot in the A League playoffs with five games remaining in the season. One of the UFC's most iconic characters, Conor McGregor, has retired for a second time. The Irishman took to Twitter last night to tell his seven and a half million followers that he was quitting mix, mixed martial arts. The announcement comes as reports surface McGregor is under investigation for sexual assault. That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later with weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful, the story of the Vietnamese CIA agent turned soup master. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Cash, on the Wagar Rong and Bula Fib, Nambandua and Ser. Oya was it size, a lambasa, and the Teletan of Rong and Bula Fem, Nambandua and Ser. We are the Tumeli, a point of town of Hingatoka, Teletakin and Avarong and Bula Fem, Nambandua and Ser. Never go find in a town of Singatoka, get on the Teletakan and Bula Fem, Nambandua and Ser. Bula Fem, Nambandua and Ser. In tonight's new media, meet the next generation full HD home monitoring camera with SD card and cloud storage. This device monitors everything you care about, your home, children, pets, elderly parents, business and more. We now join Angie for updates on the weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Such a lovely day with cool winds blowing by and the nights are getting cooler, so keep warm. The heavy rain is still pretty much active for parts of Fiji. Now taking a look in the west, quite mild scattered clouds and showers will be around. Eastwards from Pak Suva, quite humid with heavy showers expected later tonight. And up north, quite cool with showers also expected, rainy time again. At sea, it still winds 20 to 25 knots, very rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 12.22 a.m. with low tide at 6.19 a.m. Sunrise at 6.11. For tomorrow, I'm afraid showers will still roll in. Hopefully, you have your umbrellas ready and your car wipers are proper. Tomorrow's temps, major centres will be cool at low 30s. And looking further on to Friday, well, there is more showers coming our way. Let's brace for that. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. I'm Rita. Thank you, Angie. And in Fijian Pulse tonight, we ask should rapists be given life sentences without parole? 
should be given a parole uh, life sentence with a parole period, uh, meaning that uh, they have a chance, give them a chance to come back and reconcile with the family. Definitely they should be given a life sentence. Uh, on the same note, they should be located and they should be placed in different, uh, we build, uh, the government can build different uh, prison, uh, prison for them. I think it should be yes, uh, because uh, it's an ongoing issue. Eh? Uh, we have uh, continuous uh, incidents that is happening at the moment. Uh, so I believe that stricter rules should be in place uh, for this sort of uh, crime. Yes, they should remain in jail forever. Yes, there shouldn't be any parole uh, period for a beast. Recapping the main stories, pastor who allegedly raped a young church member remanded. Arbitration court orders traffic controllers to return to work. An old river bridge considered a death trap. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM, to our poll question segment. This week, we're asking, should motorists who continue to break road rules have their license suspended? You can visit our FBC website to answer. And before we go, our shot of the day, a beautiful picture of a unique flower sent in by Monitesh Chan. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. And that was your FPC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe and good night. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the water wrong and Bula Fib, Nabando and a serre. Oya was it size, Lombasa. We are the two men who are going to be able to do the same thing. We are the two men who are going to be able to do the same thing. We are the two men who are going to be able to do the same thing. We are the two men who are going to be able to do the same thing. We are the two men who are going to be able to do the same thing.